What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use styles in SketchUp to create more artistic scenes without making big changes in your model. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is just kind of a high level plaza that I've drawn and I wanted to walk you through, them, through some steps of how you could set this up so that it looks completely different and more of that artistic style. One quick note, I am not an artist. I'm just kind of replicating images that I've seen on the internet but hopefully there's still some value here. And so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna start with our camera, right? Because right now this is in perspective mode and perspective mode isn't really what we're going for. We want something a little more stylized. So we're gonna to go to our camera and do a parallel projection right here. And a lot of the time what I like to do is just jump into this ISO view because it really gives me kind of a good feel for how this could look from kind of like an upper standpoint. So notice how now this is much more exaggerated and it feels more artistic than it does like realistic. Um, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna jump into our styles. And so there's a lot of different things that we can change within our styles. And so the first thing that I usually do is I find one that's close to what I'm going for and I kind of build on top of it. So in this case, for example, we can go ahead and we can jump into maybe the construction documentation style right here. And all that really changes is our background color, which we can edit in a minute if we decide that we wanna do that. But I usually like to build off of one of these. So now the next thing I wanna do is within this view, I really am not gonna want my axes to be showing up, right? They're gonna kinda of take away from what I'm trying to do here. So I'm just gonna click on this blue box right here and I'm gonna to toggle my model axes off. And so what that's done is that's given me this kind of style in here where this is floating in a white space, which I think is a good start. And so one thing that you might do is you might think about saving some different styles. So in this case, right, I might call this like Justin BW with edges. So black and white with edges, right? And I might save that like this. And then I might create another one that's got a different style in here. And those will show up inside of my end model. And so that's gonna show up right here, right? But I could also create a new style. So if I clicked on the um, plus right here, I could do Justin black and white, no edges like this. And then I could have multiple different styles in here that I could toggle back and forth between. So for my no edges style, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my edit right here, click on my edge settings, and I'm gonna to toggle off profiles, and I'm actually going to toggle off my edges as well. Now, notice how obviously this doesn't look very good right now, but we're gonna clean it up, we're gonna use materials, all of that. For now, I'm just gonna save this as is, and one thing that I wanna do within this style, and we're actually gonna scroll down a little bit, is I actually wanna to toggle shadows on. And so notice what a huge difference toggling those shadows on makes in here. And so what I've got here is I've got this view where I've got my shadows and I can see my faces. And so usually what I like to do is I like to create a couple different scenes um, because all of these settings get saved in those scenes, right? So I'm going to create a scene here um, and I'm just going to call this one no edges. And then I'm going to save a new scene. So I'm going to click on add. And for this one, I'm going to select the black and white with edges. And I'm just going to call this with edges. And so what that does is that gives me a working view where I can toggle back and forth between them right here. Now, one thing I do want to note about this is we do want to make sure that we update this so that this style is applied in this scene like this. So now I can toggle back and forth between them like this. And so from here, we start making a little bit of stylistic decisions when it comes to our materials. And one thing that's really helpful is having those shadow, shadows toggled on. Because in this style, what we really want is we just want to apply a bunch of colors to this object. And we're really going to use that shadow location in order to drive that. And so let's say, for example, that I wanted this perimeter wall to be a series of blues, right? So what I can do is I can go into my materials right here. We're going to scroll down to the blues and notice how I've got lighter and darker blues in here. Well, generally speaking, in this style, what we want is we want the areas that are going to be in shadow to be a darker blue. Right, so I can come in here and I can start, and some of these aren't grouped, some of these are, um, but what I can do is I can start applying those darker blues to the shadow areas, right? So those are gonna be the areas that are in shadow in this style. And I can go ahead and I can jump in here and I can apply that blue to these surfaces like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave this one as is. This is gonna get a lighter blue in a second. 
And so that is kind of a good start. But now what I need to do is I need to start adding these lighter materials in the areas that the sun would be shining on. And in this case, I may be going to go with like this color I-04 for those. So notice how those are kind of a lighter blue material in here. But I still want to apply them to these surfaces. So I'm going to come in here, apply this to this surface, just like this. And so we're starting to get kind of a feel of what this might look like. Right. And so on these front surfaces, even if they are in shadow a little bit, the stuff that's kind of facing this direction right here, I'm still kind of going with that lighter blue as opposed to the darker one. And so once we do this, we're going to have a little bit of a choice in here with what to do with our top surfaces like this, because these top surfaces in here, we could leave them as white if we wanted to, or we could use kind of a lighter blue in there. And one thing that I find helpful is toggling back and forth between my with edges and my without edges right here, just to kind of see how that's going to look. And so in this case, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply that lighter blue material to this just to kind of see what it might look like. So I might go with this color I02 right here for these top surfaces. And again, it's a little bit of a stylistic decision in here if you want to apply all the blues to these surfaces or not. I think I'm going to leave these other ones white for right now. So I'm just kind of going back and looking at this and getting a feel for how this whole thing is going to look. Now for these railings, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to use a contrasting color. So something that kind of brightens the image up a little bit. So in this case, I'm probably going to apply just like an orange. Um, so we can go in here and we can find our oranges like this. So maybe I'll have this darker orange on this surface. And again, like toggling back to my width edges can be really helpful in this situation. So maybe we'll go with this color C04 for the interiors. And then this light color right here for the top of this. And so these posts are actually really easy because I've modeled them as components. And so what that means is that means that if I was to make one change, if I was to make a change to one component, it would be applied to the others as well. So in this situation, I can just come in here and I can just sample those materials using the paint bucket tool. And then I can just apply this to these surfaces. So for this other one, I want to sample this material. And again, since these are all components, it doesn't really matter which one I apply these to. All right, and so then we can go ahead and we can add a brown color in here. And again, just note that the way that the shadows are in here really makes a huge difference. Like um, if you don't have the shadows toggled on in here, this doesn't really look very good. The shadows add like a really interesting thing to this whole thing. So um, make sure that you've got those shadows, shadows toggled on. And also you've got them adjusted so that they're casting the uh, look that you want. And so then let's go ahead and let's jump into our components section. So I'm going to go into the favorites under landscape. That's going to take us to the SketchUp landscape area. And we can go into the low poly. They've got a number of two dimensional trees that you might be able to bring in in order to get um, a better look. So in this case, for example, what we might do is let's say that we wanted to bring in maybe one of these juniper trees right here. So I'm going to bring this tree in and I'm going to scale it down so that it's not like overwhelming the scene. It's just kind of in the planner box right here where you might expect it to be. And so I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of that here and a copy of that here. And we want to make sure those are actually in those boxes, which it looks like they are. And so one thing we might do is we might toggle on a different color in here um, for the background. Um, I think this looks a little bit more interesting than the white. So we might just update this right here. What I could do is I could use the position camera tool to set my camera right here so that I'm looking at this. I might zoom back a little bit, but you could add a sky in here as well to get you a completely different look. So I could rotate this over a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna make a copy. And for this style, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a sky and I'm gonna change that color to something that's um, maybe not as realistic, but maybe a little bit more interesting. So something like this pink color right here. So you can use this to create this kind of like sky gradient in the background to give this depth as well. Now, if you were to toggle this into parallel projection, notice how that's not really going to work, which is why you need to be in perspective view. You could also play around with toggling your profiles and your edges back on um, in order to get a completely different look as well. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you found this helpful or interesting. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.